Welcome back to episode 35 of the Service Design Podcast. I'm David. And my name is Stina. And we have been planning this episode for a while because we are very curious about this newest service design tool. Indeed. Uh, we're going to be speaking with uh, Victoria Dobby, who's project manager for the new uh, Playmobil Pro. Yes, welcome, Victoria, to the show. Hi. Thank you so much for inviting us to talk about Playmobil Pro. We're super excited. Where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from a small headquarters of Playmobil. Mm, cool. Mm -hmm. okay, well, well, just to, to give us a picture, what, what, what does the head office of Playmobil look like? What kind of an office space is it? It's a very large, not very tall storied building, wide, with a lot of glass. Um, it's in the middle of the countryside, in the middle of nowhere, so mm. very far from any cities, but it's a nice place and we've got lovely sunshine, so at lunchtime we like to sit outside now. Great. And we're calling you uh, about the Playmobil uh, Pro tool. Could you uh, first introduce us what this is and uh, what will happen with this uh, tool in the future? Yeah, sure. So basically, Playmobil Pro was born out of an existing concept of using Playmobil in therapeutic situations with children. So for 10 years, there's been an institute in uh, southern Germany, Munich. It's called, um, in German, the Ärztliche Akademie für Psychotherapie. So translated, that's sort of the doctoral academy for psychotherapy. And it's been selling a product called the Playmokasten, which translated would be a Playmo box to therapists and pediatricians in Germany, Austria and Switzerland, who could basically benefit from a more gamification focused approach to psychotherapy, it basically just gets children more engaged in what they're talking about. So the context of the therapy box ranges from everyday characters and accessories um, from the Playmobil assortment, so pets, cars, food items, policemen, to things which have basically a more metaphorical meaning. So examples include an angel who could represent hope or a dragon who stands for conflict or something to be feared. So basically, for a long time, Playmobil has been used not only as a children's toy, but as an effective means of communication made possible by the huge range of figures and accessories which reflect both the real world and fantasy. And this is precisely the process that has been applied to Playmobil Pro. So in past year, there's obviously been a huge interest in the field of gamification, both physical and digital. And now we're sort of getting into this space, leaning into this space, um, reaching new target groups. Essentially, it's a, it's a kit with a range of figures and accessories for professionals who are interested in the benefits of gamification in their individual line of work. So, yeah, it can be applied to all kinds of industries. We don't want to sort of decide that this is only for design thinking. I think it can be a tool that's great for project management, HR management, for teachers, lecturers. We are completely open and not developing a method. It is entirely up to the professional individual. Okay, so does that mean that the kit only exists out of certain figures and that's it? And then you can use it in your own way or do you give some guidance and some exercises that you can uh, use? Okay, so um, what you actually get in the kit, it's essentially a, a toolbox or toolkit. It's separated into four different drawers. In the first drawer, we have animals and the, the sort of plain white Playmobil figures, which kind of form the foundation of the Playmobil Pro concept. And then with this base, you can then personalize each figure and create a scene to meet your needs with the content of the other three drawers. So we have an array of different hats from crown to a turban to a motorbike helmet, a witch's hat. And there are also accessories, including different instruments, capes, food and drink items, sports goods and digital equipment. So, for example, I'll give you a few examples. We have a drone, an umbrella, keys, lantern. Honestly, if you name it, it's it's probably there. <laughs> so basically what you do is you set up your scene with your accessories, such as office equipment like computers and laptops, chairs and table. And finally, we come to the stationary drawer, which um, includes non-permanent markers. So you can write on the figures, you can write the stakeholders on them. What are your objectives for your workshop or whatever you're doing? Pen wipes, uh, white flags to signpost objectives or other significant pieces of information, and a block with sticky notes. So, yeah, that's basically the set itself. Right. Um, these plain white figures, is that something that was created specifically for this toolkit or did they already exist? 
Now, that's actually a really interesting question because when we started right at the beginning with the conception of Playmobil Pro, actually the figures were red, orange, black, and white. And through doing our prototyping phase with, with a few test companies like Adidas, Bosch, Siemens, um, some feedback came came back from them that actually the white figures were the best because obviously they contrasted the most with the non-permanent pens and that you could individualize each of the figures by writing on them. And that came out as probably the most important feature of the Playmobil Pro kit. And then we kind of developed it around this concept so that you would individualize the figures. So it's very much a, a role play and human centered approach. You're touching on something that sounds uh, very interesting and I'm curious about testing with other companies and stuff. Uh, can you tell us a bit more about the process of how you came from a first version of Playmobil Pro to what it ended up being? Yeah, sure. So it's um, the product development stage. It, conception was in, in January and we... Um, we uploaded a video onto uh, onto LinkedIn um, at the time of the um, International Toy Trade Fair here in Nuremberg, which is close by to our headquarters. Um, it was just a video about um, about the Playmobil Pro Kit, a new project, sort of new um, um, places that we're going with Playmobil Pro, and um, it just completely exploded online. We were we were so surprised by um, by all the calls that we were getting from people and emails and comments on all of on the video on LinkedIn and people were like so excited about it this is what we've been waiting for when is it coming on the market so it was kind of a a bit of a kick in the backside now you know we've got to we've got to really uh, do this project and bring it onto the market pretty quickly so we were getting all these um questions from people saying oh can we try the prototype and that was sort of one of the cornerstones of this whole project that we would develop this project product um, with the people who were going to use it. And that's something that we want to continue once we've um, um, launched it on the market too. So we had, um, we had people from, from Adidas, Bosch, Siemens, which I've already mentioned. Um, we had a consulting agency in London called Red Badger Consulting, who used it at a global service jam in London and at King's College London um, in some workshops about design thinking. Then there was the Barcelona School of Management, which has used it and developed their own method, actually, which is really, really cool. Um, let me think who else has tested it. Um, the HBI Academy in Berlin, um, Beiersdorf, who own the brand Nivea, Daimler, who owns Mercedes. So, you know, we've had a massive range um, and it's been really excited to to get some of the feedback from them and to develop the product with the feedback that we've gotten. And was there next to the white um, little dolls another uh, important uh, type of feedback that you got that you uh, implemented later? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, there were a lot of people asking for... Um, so aside from the figures being white, they sort of wanted flags and things to be white um, or tables and chairs, anything which sort of signified a significant signpost and sort of accessories for uh, digital equipment. So we added, for example, a, a robot because robotics is going to be a massive theme in the next 10 years. Um, a drone we added based on, and of course, a little bit more office equipment, which wasn't in the the original uh, prototype. So is the uh, product completely out and available uh, for purchase, or is it still in a, more of a pilot mode? No, unfortunately not. Actually, it's coming out um, in um, beginning of August 2019. So got, mm -hmm. uh, got a little bit longer to go don't know when this podcast is going to be published <laughs> but yeah we were super excited coming sort of to the end of yeah. um of the launch nice and where will people be able to buy it will it be online or will it be in shops yeah there will be um we have our own microsite uh, for playmobil pro and um people can go on there and um and purchase it from from the microsite which will go live at the beginning of august okay cool what are some um, type of workshops that people used it in already? Can you give some uh, examples of the companies that you named? Like what uh, 
type of workshop they did and how did they use the, the tool already? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, one instance is um, in team building. So a lot of um, very large blue chip companies have sort of uh, think tanks or innovation centers where they take their employees out of their normal working situation and do team building workshops where they come together prototyping, brainstorming for new products, just to get them sort of out of their normal everyday working situation and bring them into a more creative space where they're um, encouraged to think freely. And um, Playmobil Pro has been really, really good for, for that sort of situation. Um, you can sort of um, have icebreakers where you um, personalize a figure and then you um, then you talk about who your figure is, who you are, why you've personalized it with those specific accessories. Um, then another example um, is where people have used Playmobil Pro to set up timelines for projects, for example. So that's why we've used it actually internally here at Playmobil. If we're talking about a specific product that we're going to launch next year, we'll set up the timeline with one of the tapes from the stationary drawer and then write down all the months leading up to the, to the final date, what are our objectives. Then we'll personalize each of the figures with the project manager who's, you know, um, responsible for marketing, who's responsible for sales, product development, and etc. Yeah, so that's sort of an example where we've actually yeah. used it ourselves. In, in the past, uh, I, I've used regular Playmobil for uh, in workshops, uh, for instance, for for communicating mm -hmm. scenarios or something, or trying to uh, communicate a physical space uh, in a, in a short workshop. Yeah. Uh, what I very curious about now um, you mentioned it on the site as well is uh, being able to use these blank figures for personas uh, do you know if, if one of those uh, teams has actually done this already we're not but um, actually the one of the co-authors of this is service design doing um, Marcus Edgar Hormus he actually helped us to develop the product and obviously, one of the um, one of the six service design principles that uh, are outlined in this book is obviously that it's human centered. So um, I think Plainview Pro, unlike other other gamification tools, is particularly suited to to this human centered approach because it's all about the figure. This is the base; it's the white figure, and what you do around it. Um, you're um, depicting relationships between stakeholders. How are you um, going to improve the employee experience and thus the customer experience? Yeah, so uh, a tool I think which other um, companies already are using is like Lego Serious Play. What do you see as a big difference between these uh, tools? Yeah, so um, what we always say is that, um, you know, kids are either Playmobil kids or, or Lego kids. And um, the reason being is that Playmobil um, Pro and, and Playmobil the toy, it's all about it's all about role play and who you are as a person, what you're doing. And whereas Lego is all about building. So they're, they're two completely different concepts. And I think they, they're both incredibly valuable tools. They're valid for whatever objective you're trying to achieve. So I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Yeah, I can imagine that Lego is uh, suitable for more vision creating, whereas uh, Playmobil is really like uh, the role playing, which you say, like more human centered uh, design that it really triggers yeah. thinking from a person's perspective and moving it around in the space. Uh, I can see that there is a yeah. quite a big difference and that both can be uh, useful in a, another way. Sure. I mean, the Lego is about the Lego block, ultimately, isn't it? And Playmobil is about, is about the figure. When you figure. said you were a Playmobil kit or a Lego uh, kit. I was a <laughs> I Playmobil was kit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I can still remember the first kit that I played with when I was about five years old. It was a, <laughs> a zoo. And I recently found it online and it just brought back the memories. <laughs> I actually... Yeah. Uh, I also think I was a, or I'm sure I was a Playmobil kit and I would even like to uh, think that my uh, ser service design career already started there. Like I was always building with my sister, like whole towns <laughs> and then it has to stay for at yeah. least one week and then we would move around with all the puppets and uh, let them just live <laughs> their life in uh, the world that we uh, we set up. So it uh, brings uh, back great memories as well. <laughs> 
Yes. Does this uh, playful nature of the tool uh, sometimes uh, become a, a, a resistance for people? Yeah, to, to use it. other people who end up going, oh, I'm not going to play with toys. I'm here to work. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think there's going to be a stigma. People saying, I mean, what can you what can you do with toys? I mean, it's just a toy. What do you want to achieve with that? But actually, you know, there's been a lot of research done in the past few years on on the benefits of gamification. And I think, you know, slowly as tools such as Lego Series Play and Playmobil Pro um, are introduced into big companies and um, and they are used in innovation workshops or design thinking workshops, then I think that stigma will will slowly, mm-hmm. slowly fade. But yeah, gamification is uh, hugely beneficial. It It's basically encourages you to be to be more playful open um creative i mean these are only positive things right as a uh, service designers we often get like the comments that we're doing a lot of workshops but then afterwards uh, what do you do with all the input and that uh implementation can be a challenge um have you thought about that with the playmobil mm-hmm. pro tool so what happens after a workshop so one thing, one feedback that we got from from one of the companies that we did the prototyping phase was that, you know, you did this workshop and then you kind of forgot what you actually did in the workshop. So we um, are actually developing a Playmobil Pro app, which allows you to document what you're doing in uh, a workshop or whatever your objective is in a, in a session with Playmobil Pro. So you can sort of edit the photos and then there's a possibility to upload those photos to a community. So um, so sort of like a cloud um, and there will be different um, sort of headings for different best practices. So we've thought of um, how can Playmobil Pro be used in education and training? How can it be used in innovation workshops? How can it be used for design thinking? We've got sort of a list which will be um, um, available on the app and each of those photos will then be um, reviewed by an internal team here at Playmobil. And um, then we'll upload them. So basically, you can you can look at what other people are doing with Playmobil Pro, and then you can click on their profile and maybe get in contact with them, ask them sort of what have you what have you been doing here. Hmm. I think that could be very inspiring for uh, for others. Yeah, I think it's just another platform, you know. Mm-hmm. I could imagine that uh, you could also, for example, if you're role playing, indeed take some pictures and even make like a storyboard from the pictures you took that you really show visually what um, steps the user uh, is taking. So I could imagine that being a very useful uh, output of a workshop as well. Yeah. And we're also going to be offering um, on our microsite that I was talking about earlier uh, the possibility to sort of download some um, customer journey na- maps, um, the design thinking uh, principles, um, brainstorming maps. So just to sort of help the creative process for people who are who are unused to, to gamification tools. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that is quite useful because... Uh, for some people, they will start using it in their own creative way anyways. But to get people started, I can imagine that some starting simple exercises might really help to uh, yes. just get them on board yeah. and then uh, be creative yeah. afterwards. And we'll be providing like a user guide with um, some icebreakers and things just to get people into the into the feel of it, see what you can do. But nevertheless, we're, we're staying quite open and allowing people to do what they want with it and to develop their own methods. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's very nice. Uh, have you uh, been using Playmobil Pro within Playmobil to uh, do any yes. workshops? Yes. Um, I don't know. I think I thought I mentioned it earlier, but we use it a lot in project management. Mm-hmm. So when we're setting up um, sort of we've got a deadline for something and, and we're sort of what are our objectives um, and when do we need to achieve them by? Who is responsible for what? Um, but also we've used them um, in team building sessions. So um, sort of personalizing the figures and um, yeah, telling people who you are, pe- perhaps like building up a network within the company of people you haven't met in different departments and things like that. And uh, do you see any anything from Playmobil Pro uh, flowing back to the toys, like something uh, the way they're used or... Uh, elements that are developed? That's a good question. 
actually, yes. Um, when we got the feedback about the um, um, about wanting more digital equipment, like the the drones and stuff, we had one um, question for a um, VR gl- um, glasses, mm. and uh, we didn't have that in our assortment. We had the robot, we had the drone, um, but perhaps that's something that will lead to development with sort of more futuristic worlds and looking into to robotics and AI and things like that. I think that could be a really, uh, really good um, new set for Playmobil for the kids. Mm. Mm-hmm. I was uh, curious how this uh, project uh, started. Was it like a, a sort of innovation lab where you uh, were working with some colleagues, or did you uh, was there was the idea already uh, alive, and did you uh, decided we're just gonna make the video that you said that was so popular, and then afterwards <laughs> we'll see? And how was then uh, how yeah. was the team constructed around this project? How did it yeah. like happen within uh, Playmobil? Um, so it did actually run very differently to how normal processes would do in Playmobil. Obviously, it's not a toy with Playmobil Pro. Um, and um, I work in business development, so we are responsible for um, new ideas, innovating, coming up with um, new concepts for Playmobil, new target groups and things like that. Um, and when I joined, I've actually only been at Playmobil for eight months, but when I joined in November um, here at my role um, in business development, um, I was sort of attending a few meetings and and one of them was about this idea that somebody had for Playmobil Pro, you know, gamification. We could sort of go down this route. And I thought, hey, that sounds like a good idea. So um, I sort of picked it up uh, by myself and um, thought, well, let's come on. Let's let's try and see, test it out with some people, make a video, see how it, what's the response is on LinkedIn. And then it just went through the roof and we were just so surprised. Um, so, yeah. and then. Um, The, the team has been myself, uh, my manager. Um, he's the head of business development at Playmobil. He's called Frank Muller, who unfortunately couldn't be here today because he's on holiday. Um, and then the head of development, um, a guy called Peter Jensch. And um, that's sort of the core team. And then obviously we've had um, help from marketing and help from graphics and things like that. Cool. Just being curious uh, not knowing how an organization like playmobil works so if at some point you realize you want these uh, these white mini figures <laughs> how how what how does that work how do you get the the um yeah the part the com- part of the company that builds them to build the white figures and stuff i just have no idea does that happen in the head office or does it have to go to a factory uh, in another country How does it work? Yeah, so uh, we have we have factories all over Europe, um, in Spain, in Malta, Czech Republic, Germany. Um, as far as I know, the white figures are produced actually in Germany. Or yeah, I think it's in Germany. Some of the boxes produced in Czech Republic, and um, we have um, our head of production here. He's um, on the board of directors, and we've had a few meetings with the board of directors where we've sort of said, look. Um, this is the final stand, product freeze, um, and then um, somebody in the product development department he he sort of writes out like what are all the different accessories we've got a we've got a freeze on what's going in and out of there, and then a list basically gets sent to the um, um, to the factory, and then they get produced. I guess this is an, an atypical uh, set of Playmobil compared to existing <laughs> sets, so having to go into a different kind of box and everything. Absolutely, did you, yes. Did you run into any difficulties getting that into reality? Um, yeah, definitely. I think um, often the problem with being in a, in the business development department is that you feel like you're you're doing the job of other people, so you make... Um, you make suggestions for um, for new business for new um, sorry um, play sets or um, what can we do differently? Can we change the processes in the organization to make them more effective? And people who have worked here for for a little bit longer might not be used to that. I mean, nobody likes change, right? Um, so coming out with an 
completely new set. And I must say for me personally, when I was new in the company too, I definitely felt like I was treading on eggshells some of the time. But I think mostly people are very, very excited about what we're doing here, um, both internally and externally. And um, it can only can only go up and in a positive direction. Okay. So the product will be out in August. Yeah. How many will you uh, produce? <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't tell you uh, the answer to that, um, but uh, I'm sure that we'll be able to meet the demand. Okay. Well, what needs to happen before uh, August? Are there still some uh, things you... Uh... We have received the boxes from our supplier, um, the, the toolbox, mm -hmm. um, which you can carry around and it's sort of all sorted out, all the pieces. So it's um, nicely and sorted. So for anyone who appreciates organization, I think they will enjoy uh, unpacking this box. Um, <laughs> and But the, the pieces themselves, they need to be produced. Um, the packaging needs to be produced. Um, our uh, user guide still needs to be printed. So I tell you what, the next month is going to be pretty busy for me. <laughs> <laughs> no holidays for you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah but it'll be exciting yes <laughs> so um, about yourself how did you end up uh, working at Playmobil what attracted you to the company um, so I actually only graduated last year from from university um, I studied modern foreign languages um, in the UK I'm, I'm British actually um, German was one of the languages that I studied, and I did some work experience um, throughout my studies. I always wanted to go into business, and I always thought that having foreign foreign language would just give me that edge. So I had some experience um, in the toy industry, and I just thought it was such a nice industry to work in. Even though you have, yes, you have competitors, um, it's it's a nice sort of relaxed atmosphere you're you're designing toys at the end of the day it's it's just fun it's a really fun industry to work in and um so i wrote to some um some manufacturers some toy manufacturers um around the world saying look i i'm just finished with university do you have anything like a like a trainee program or a, a graduate program is what we call them in in the UK and um, I got a few replies and Playmobil was one of them. Excellent and uh, already uh, working on something really cool so quickly. Yeah yeah it's been absolutely amazing. I'm so glad I came here. Great. Well we are very excited. Um, I hope we can uh, manage to get a box in, uh, in August. I'm very curious to try it out yeah, uh, definitely. myself. <laughs> Thanks so much for inviting me to chat. Yeah, thanks you. Thanks for sharing the the process. I think that was very inspiring for uh, for the listeners, and uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, they will be excited in getting a, a box as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so you mentioned already at the start, but if people are, are interested in finding out more about this, where where do they find the, the information about Playmobil Pro online? Yeah, so we, uh, we've got a blog or a community on LinkedIn. So if you just search for Playmobil Pro, then it should pop up. Um, and in um, August, you should be able to get onto our live microsite, which is um, pro.playmobil.com. All right. So all of you listening, uh, <laughs> go check it out. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing how it, it starts getting used in, in service design. I'm pretty sure... Uh, we will already think of many ways to uh, include it in our work. Um, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank Victoria, you so much. For, uh, yeah, joining us for it was a pleasure. Talk. All right. And uh, all the best of luck for this uh, crunch month, <laughs> yeah. getting uh, the product out. Yeah, <laughs> likewise. And, uh, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank okay. you. Bye. 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 The Service Design Podcast was brought to you by the Service Design Network and Night Moves. For more information, previous episodes, or to join the conversation, please visit servicedesignpodcast.com. For more information about the Service Design Network, visit service-design-network.org. And for Night Moves, visit nightmoves.be. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to this podcast. The intro and outro music is from If the Stars Grow Dim Tonight, 
by Hydrogen C featuring I Will I Swear. Until next time.